Sex or the saw? Yeah. Sex is, well, uh, nobody knows. But the saw, the saw is family. Hello. My name is John, and I plan to be your one-stop shop for action movies, comic book movies, and the occasional horror movie reviews and rankings. And today we're talking about my favorite horror franchise, that being the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. And before we get started, in case any of you noticed this, in my background I have A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, previous videos had like Final Destination and Scream and yet I don't have these Texas Chainsaw movies even though I keep saying it's my favorite horror franchise and that's just basically because I'm in my early 20s I discovered the Texas Chainsaw franchise in college and the vast majority of my physical collection especially when it comes to horror movies was acquired in high school that's why most of them are DVDs, because I didn't have a Blu-ray player until I was in college. But So that's the main reason is. Back then, I didn't have to worry about buying my own groceries and bills and stuff. Now, I do. And so I just haven't been able to acquire the Texas Chainsaw movies as much. But let's just, it's still my favorite franchise. Once I discovered it, I instantly fell in love with it. And so let's get started. These last two spots are both pretty big duds for me, but I'm gonna give last place to Texas Chainsaw 3D. Most people would give it to the next generation. And the main reason for this is this is the one that I think pisses me off most for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is this is a movie where it's literally just Leatherface chasing them around it doesn't have that big family feel even though the story is driven by the family it doesn't have the family chasing them or the family's not involved in the actual horror aspects of the movie and i don't come and i come to the texas chainsaw movies for the family the cannibalistic family dynamic not just leatherface and then the other then another thing that's kind of a personal preference is I like my Chainsaw movies to have a big dinner scene. This doesn't have that. But the thing that really gets to me is the kind of the messaging of this movie. It makes it seem like it sends this message where the only thing that makes you family is blood and actual personal and emotional connections mean nothing when it comes to family because Leatherface is this giant monster who goes around killing and chopping up the final Alexandra Daddario's character's best friends, her boyfriend, and is even trying to kill her and chop her up. And yet the second she finds out that they share blood and that they're cousins, all, all is forgiven. All is forgiven. Like it's, it's just stupid. I'm sorry, it's it's stupid. You can't, it, you, it's so stupid. That's all I can really say about all of that. Like, no, that, no. And the other thing is, in the second half of the movie, Leatherface becomes like this heroic character. Like all of a sudden he's not the villain. The Sawyers aren't the villains. The Hartmans are the villains. And Leatherface saves Alexander's the, Dario's character from the villains and they make Leatherface and the Sawyers out to be these sympathetic heroes that's just a load of bullshit like come on it's so stupid I, I, I can't stand this movie so I'm just gonna move on so at number seven is the one that most people probably put in last place and that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the next generation this one obviously has some big issues. I mean, the most notable one is that Leatherface is in drag at the in the third act, which I don't mind as an idea because if you look in the original Toby Hooper movie, he has lipstick and blush on and stuff. But this movie, he just, he doesn't look like Leatherface. He looks like an ugly, transvestite hooker or something it's it's horrible but 
and then they do the whole conspiracy theory thing with the Sawyers, like they're controlled by like the FBI or something, it's weird. And then, but the reason this isn't in last place, and the acting's horrible for the most part, but the reason it's not in last place is because of one specific performance in the acting, and that is Matthew McConaughey's inclusion in this movie. He has this great all-out performance as Vilmer. It's very entertaining to watch. And so I do think there's some so bad it's good qualities or so bad it's fun, maybe not good, but fun qualities to the next generation that puts it just ahead of Texas Chainsaw 3D, but they would both get like one stars if I did a review for them. So they're not very good movies. Now that we got those two bottom movies out of the way, the rest of these movies I am mostly positive on. I'm a fan of them to diff to varying degrees. I'm a fan of all of these rest of these six movies. And so let's just move on to number six, which is Leatherface from 2017. I believe that was the year. And I do think this movie is a good movie on its own merit but I don't think it's necessarily a great Texas Chainsaw movie because it's mainly about this young adult version of Leatherface escaping a mental asylum thing with a group of mentally insane people and a nurse. And so it's more of like a police chasing them movie than it is an actual like a group of kids get lost in Texas and find themselves upon this horrible family. It's not that. And then also, I mean, one thing about this movie is the fact that it does this weird red herring thing with the characters, but with which character actually turns out to be Leatherface. But if you just look at the poster, it spoils the that twist, red herring twist that they write in there. Because the one that they want to make you think is Leatherface is way huskier and bigger than the Leatherface that's actually in the poster. So, but anyway, let's get on to fifth place is Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 from 1990, even though it feels like a mid 80s slasher movie. This is a movie that I think is a really fun, just 80s slasher, even though it came out in 1990, technically. But it has, a, it has a fun soundtrack to it. And, but one of the things that does hold it back is the fact that it feels much more like a generic 80s slasher. Um, but I am a big fan of um, Benny. The, he was, he, he's also in the Halloween remake for like a scene or so. But, you know, I was a big fan of his character. I'm a big fan of the inclusion of Viggo Mortensen. Mainly because I like how he comes off as this nice, pretty, pretty boy, um, charming cowboy character at the beginning. And then they kind of do the twists and he's basically just as nasty and dirty as the rest of the Sawyer families. And I thought that was a nice touch to put in a Texas Chainsaw movie to have kind of a pretty boy type of guy there to trick the audience a little a little bit even though it's pretty predictable but overall the only thing that really holds it back is the generic quality of it but I love 80s slashers that's kind of the horror movies I grew up on even though I grew up in the 2000s mostly I do love that era of slashers and then moving on to the fourth spot. This is one that my opinion is more positive on than it was previously after my most recent rewatch. And that is the 2003 remake. Um, this is a good movie. Um, it uses some nice camera work, you know, like when it zooms out of the like bullet hole at the beginning, you get a couple more like through the hole shots. And it uses a, good production. It has a really great production design. And I think it has some of the best side characters. And obviously it's, it introduces you to R. Lee Ermey. And his character is iconic within the franchise, but I do prefer his character in the beginning. 
And I think Andrew Brynjarski's leather face is great as well, but I also prefer his leather face in the beginning. And the main and the biggest thing that holds this back is it has one of the worst, probably has the worst final girl that it outside of the two really bad movies. This probably has the worst out of those these first top six movies. And so that really holds it back. And it's not the performance. Jessica Biel does fine. It's more the way she's written. I don't like the way the final girl is written. Where in the original, each individual character kind of makes the decision to search for the other one that winds them up at the Sawyer house. Where in this one, Jessica Biel constantly makes the decisions for everybody and all of her decisions are bad. All of her decisions get them killed. And so I just don't like it when the main character, the final girl, has all of those decisions on her. And so I guess let's move on to number three. We're getting the top three. And at number three is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Um, I'm a massive fan of this film. And like I said, I like one of the things that makes this, stands this film out from like the remake is how Leatherface is written within it. He has, it utilizes his, it's my favorite version of Leatherface because the remake has, is the same like physical performer as the remake, but and so it has that same jacked monstrous quality to him. But it also has the, it also explores the more mentally handicapped side that like, let's say part two explored. And so I like how it combines all of those to make my favorite interpretation of Leatherface. Then I also like Sheriff Hoyt better in this movie, especially because you get kind of that Korean, that Korean War background to him as well. And you kind of get, a, and you get to understand why they eat people, you know, like the, the meat plant shut down, packing plant shut down. And so they didn't have like, the same meat, all this meat around them to eat. So they resorted to eating tourists or whatever, eating people and stuff. And then I like how they tie in like Vietnam War and some small commentary on like the military draft and stuff with the, with Matt Bomer character and the other, and his character's brother. And Chrissy is one of my favorite final girls in this franchise. And I am a massive, Fast and Furious fan. And so having like Jordana Brewster, the the actress that plays Mia Toretto pop up in a Texas Chainsaw movie, I like having that. And she's the final girl, the main character as well. And I always enjoy seeing those characters in other good movies, those actors from Fast and Furious in other good movies. And so that was just, that's a nice touch for me personally. And I actually enjoy the music quite a bit, but I do think there are some elements that feel like they don't need to be needed. Like when Sheriff Hoyt like rapes one of the victims, it's a little weird, but that's kind of the only thing that really holds it back too much. And I don't think Leatherface's mask is particularly, particularly great. But now we're on to the top two both of these movies are among my favorite horror movies of all time. And I even posted a review for part two last week on Saturday. And then in the middle of the week, I posted a face-off between the original and the remake, put them up against each other and analyzed them into five different categories. It was closer than I initially thought it would be. So go ahead and check that out as well. And so let's just get into this. In number two, this probably be, this is gonna be pretty controversial. In number two is the original 1974, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't really have any neg too many negatives. The only negative I really have is Franklin his dialogue and his performance is kind of annoying but outside of that I love absolutely love and adore this movie 
I just, I, I love the surreal nature and how it almost feels like a snuff film, which adds to the dread and the horror of these events. And I love how they kind of write in the twist with Drayton's character, how when you get to the gas station, you think that Marilyn Burns' character is safe now because she found someone else, but then it turns out that he's part of the Leatherface He's like Leatherface's father or older brother or whatever. I thought that little twist there is a very nice touch. And then I think Marilyn Burns gives a brilliant performance as well. Some of that might be due to some of the conditions being kind of iffy, but the filming conditions were pretty iffy from that movie. But I just, I love that. I do love this movie, even though it's not number one. And then obviously by process of elimination. And also if you did check out my review from last weekend, you'll probably know that my number one is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two. I absolutely, this is one of my top three horror movies of all time. I just absolutely adore this movie. I have much more in-depth thoughts on that review from last weekend but I just love how it shows Stretch and Lefty's descent into madness because of the events that the Sawyers put them through I love the design of Battleland and I just love the I love the how this tone is so chaotic and maniacal and how that fits in with the crazy maniacal nature of the Sawyers and the craziness that stretch and lefty are in when when you get to the end of the movie i just think all of it works together and i know some people i've heard some people criticize the acting but it's acting that fits perfectly in this horror black comedy tone that this movie's going for and i love it's a very underrated score as well i just absolutely love this movie chop top is the best character in this franchise in my opinion I just, I, I don't really have any negatives with this movie. And so that's why it's at number one. I have much more in deep thoughts, in depth thoughts in my review for it. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoy this franchise as much as I do, if you've seen all the movies, even if you haven't seen all the movies, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ones that you have seen in the comments down below. And I plan on doing a horror movie review and or ranking every Saturday leading up to Halloween. Got a couple weeks left before then. And there's, there'll probably be some more maybe in the middle of the week as well. So look forward to that. And then also if you like this video, if you like me, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And smash that subscribe button if you want a one-stop shop for action movies, comic book movies, and horror movie reviews and rankings and as always during these texas chainsaw videos always remember that the saw is family